I want to talk about Miami Heat sharpshooter Duncan Robinson because I truly believe he could be an X factor for the Miami Heat in the 24-25 NBA season, which could elevate the heat ceiling on how far they can advance into the NBA postseason. I am Nick Roloff. This is the Heat Report by Chat Sports. And before we dive into the nuts and bolts on Duncan Robinson, show him some love. He's had a very up and down career with the Miami Heat, currently on that upward trajectory. Spam those double nickels 55s down in the comment section. All right, the Miami Heat are always looking for a spark on the offensive end. It's been something that the Heat have struggled with over the past five seasons, really ever since Jimmy Butler joined this roster and made the Heat one of the top contenders in the Eastern Conference, they have always had one glaring consistency with the team. They've been excellent defensively because when you have Jimmy, Eric Spolstra, and Bam at a bio, you're always going to have a good defense. Bam's the best defender in the planet. Jimmy's one of the best two-way guys in steel, passing lane players in the NBA, and then Spo just is an absolute mad scientist that cooks things up. But they've always struggled on the offensive end, and we've documented how they have failed to reach the 110-point threshold in big games, which is really the benchmark nowadays in the NBA postseason to where if you can get to 110 points, you're likely going to win that game. I always go back to the 2023 NBA Finals when Miami didn't really eclipse 100 more than once in that at finals. And the one game that they eclipsed 100, hey, what did you know? They won. But the reason why I'm tying this all into Duncan Robinson is because I believe he can be someone that really elevates this Heat offense. Obviously, Miami went out and traded for Terry Rozier a couple weeks before the 2023 NBA trade deadline to make that push, to create a better offense. But this man right here, Duncan Robinson, may be more important than we actually think think because last season when Duncan Robinson was a starter for Miami he started 36 games when Tyler Hero was out or Terry Rozier was out the Heat were 23 and 13 that's an incredible pace that would put Miami as one of the best teams in the NBA if they kept that pace now it's unlikely that that would be the case but either way the numbers don't lie when Duncan Robinson started games for Miami they won and I'll even go a step further. When Duncan Robinson was aggressive, when he was playing well on the offensive end, he got to 10 points plus a night. That is when it really took another level. And I remember recording the stat last year in about March or February that when Duncan Robinson got to 18 plus points, 20 plus points, the Heat were undefeated. So when Duncan Robinson plays well, the Heat win games. And it's because of what he can do to opposing defenses. When Duncan Robinson is a threat consistently from beyond the arc. And that usually is the case. That's what made him so impactful when he came onto the scene in 2019-2020, in 2020-21, but then had a couple down years, was out of the rotation, Max Struess replaced him, and then had the resurgent year last season. The opposing defense has to come out so far on the Heat's two-man action between Duncan Robinson and Bam Adebayo, where it frees up and creates more space inside the three-point arc, which allows more off-ball cutting. Jimmy Butler to get back door. Duncan Robinson get hedged and doubled off of a dribble handoff with Adebayo to where they have to make a decision as a defense. Do we press up on Duncan and make him get the ball out of his hands, which he does very well, dumps off the Bam, and Bam in that short roll now gets to have a four-on-three where he can either take it to the rack or make a decision, kick it out to a different player or someone cutting on that dunker spot. But if they don't do that, Duncan Robinson could just rise into his shot from beyond the arc or one dribble pull up in. And that is the part that's so fascinating about Duncan Robinson last season and how effective he was off one dribble shooting in that dribble handoff situation. He actually led the NBA in one dribble three-point attempts with 105. And it goes a step further as well with Duncan Robinson. He did not just only lead the NBA in one dribble three-point attempts at 105, but he also led the NBA in three-point percent shooting off one dribble shot attempts. 42.9% was that mark. He was one of the most efficient three-point shooters in the NBA and was the most efficient three-point shooter off one dribble. It was truly impressive to see Duncan Robinson bounce back after a horrific 2022-23 NBA season. It was something that I think just as a person that we can all appreciate how Duncan was able to bounce back after being out of the rotation. 
And let's not forget, this guy's getting paid a lot of money to be one of the best shooters in the NBA. So when you have that much pressure riding on every single shot because it's the one thing that you need to provide on a nightly basis and you're not providing it, that can weigh on you heavily, but he was able to do it last season, and it's why I think he's the X factor for Miami this year, which we're going to dive into more here in just a second. But make sure you do get this Miami Heat t-shirt right now. Heat season's about a month away, and when they get back on the hardwood, you need to be repping Miami in your home or out to the bars with your friends and family, and this shirt is absolutely fire. Chatsports.com slash heat shirt. It's $20 right now, usually $30, $10 off. Links in the description and comments of today's show. Chatsports.com slash heat shirt. Grab yours today. All right, let's continue on why I think Duncan Robinson is an X factor for this Heat team. We mentioned the statistics about how good the Heat were when he's starting, how good he was off one dribble shots in the dribble handoff situation alongside Bam at a bio, and how much pressure he puts on opposing defenses. But when you have a sharpshooter coming off the bench or starting, it just changes your whole dynamic of your team. And we've talked a lot about who should start for the Miami Heat, who shouldn't start. I'm under the belief that I don't think Terry Rozier and Tyler Hero should start this year because they're two of the worst finishers at the rim, both way under league average last season at 59%. Hero shot 50% at the restricted area. Terry shot about 54 So both unbelievably below league average. Both are not good on the defensive side of the floor. And when they shared time last season, only 11 games played, very limited, about 160 minutes, they had a negative three rating. So I don't like them starting together, which is why I think Duncan Robinson could actually be one of your starters. I've also thrown out the idea of starting Haywood Highsmith, but when you looked at what Duncan did last season as a starter, it's hard to ignore that maybe he should be getting that nod. And when he works alongside Terry Rozier, you're now talking about someone who works so well off Jimmy, works very well off of Bam Adebayo, and will just create so many issues and points for, I, I, I don't, maybe I'm kind of spacing here on the way I want to put this, but when you have the pressure that he's putting on opposing defenses, it's hard for the defense to account for your star players of Jimmy and Bam. And it's crazy to think that Duncan Robinson could be such a pressure point on opposing defenses to where Jimmy and Bam are getting better looks because of him. But that's the God's honest truth. How many times did Bam at a bio get a nice little pull-up jumper off the catch because Duncan got doubled or the defense was so keyed in on Duncan curling off of a screen or a pin down to where another player was wide open in a different spot? Duncan Robinson can change the entire way this Miami Heat team play basketball. And I think that was evident in the postseason last year. Unfortunately, Duncan, in the last two weeks, month of the season, had that back injury. And I don't know how much that's going to affect him this year. I hope it doesn't affect him whatsoever. But it does scare me a little bit. And I think when you saw the Heat go out there, they were down Duncan Robinson, they were down Jimmy Butler, they were down Terry Rozier, and they were even missing Jaime Hawkins Jr. for that final game five against the Boston Celtics in the first round of the 2024 NBA playoffs. And I'm not going to say Duncan's the most important, but if you had D-Rob out there fully healthy, giving it his all, being the most impactful version of himself that he can be, I think we would have seen a more fluid offense with Hero and Bam because it was ugly at times, but Duncan Robinson would have alleviated that pressure. We're going to wrap up a bow on this conversation here in just a second. But well, make sure you are subscribed to the channel because we're putting out daily content. No one else on YouTube puts out daily content surrounding the Miami Heat. We pride ourselves on being here every day for you at home. So hit that sub button because our coverage is only going to ramp up when the season gets started in mid-October. All right. The Heat did sign Alec Burks, though, and I have been open to potentially moving on from Duncan Robinson because you have Alec Burks on a vet mid. Burks, someone who's averaged double-digit points per game in each of the last four seasons and has shot over 40% from beyond the arc in three of the last four years, the one exception coming last season where he shot 38%, which is still very good in his split year with the Knicks and Pistons. He really struggled in New York, was good in Detroit, but when you have Duncan, and this could be his last year, because when you look at his contract, he has $19.4 million guaranteed this season. Next season, $19.9 million, but that's not fully guaranteed. That he'd actually have an early termination option. What does that mean, you ask? 
well, the Heat could actually release or cut Duncan Robinson next year with that early termination option. They would not get the full $19.9 million back, but they would get more than half. They would owe Duncan Robinson $9.9 .9 million next year. That's what's guaranteed. So if they wanted to, they can free up a Duncan Robinson in that cap or space of $10 million, free up a roster spot, and allocate that $10 million to a player that they might deem more impactful. So this year is very important for Duncan. I think he's the X factor for the Heat because if he continues to shoot the way he did last season and shoots above 40% from three once again coming off the bench or in a starting role, that's not only going to help the Heat offense, but it's going to help the Heat make a decision on his future next year. But if he struggles, he also can be classified as an X factor, if you will, because he could be an X factor in the way the Heat build this roster next season because there could be a lot of turnover. Josh Richardson is on a one-year deal this season. Thomas Bryant, one-year deal. Duncan could be early termination, and Jimmy Butler's got a player option next year. It's a realistic situation and pathway here where a lot of key players on this Miami Heat basketball team aren't back next season, but I do believe Duncan can really be someone to drive this Heat offense because we've seen the Heat lack three-point shooting at times. Hawkes needs to improve. Jovic is getting better. Highsmith was there last season. And if Duncan's going to be able to continue to shoot 40-plus percent from three, and this past season was an anomaly, and he doesn't revert back to 22-23 where he shot 35%, couldn't be on the floor, and only played in half the games and got replaced by Max Struess, I think Miami's going to be in a fine spot with their bench depth with Duncan Robinson leading that second unit and its three-point shooting. All right, before we get out of here, I want to circle back to this. If you didn't already, I don't know what you're doing. Spam those double fives, 55 down in the comment section. The show loved the Duncan Robinson. Even if you do not like the way he plays and the way he struggles defensively at times, you have to appreciate the resiliency that he showed to bounce back after his worst season in the NBA in 22-23 to have an impactful season last year. So whatever you're doing, I don't care, but spam those 55s.